This is Algebra 2, Chapter 7, Section 3, in which we will study logarithms and logarithmic functions. All a logarithm is, is a fancy way of writing exponents. Okay. Logarithmic form and exponential form are two forms of the same equation. Okay. I will refer to this a lot in class with you as flip-flopping. So when, when you ask me something and I say, oh, just flip-flop it, that's what I'm talking about. Is changing it between the two forms. Okay, you'll notice logarithmic form has a log in it. That stands for logarithm, it's just short. Y equals the log base B of X is the same equation as saying B to the Y equals X. Notice the base here, B, is the same as the base on your log. And then the X and the Y trade jobs. Okay. Where the X was with the B before, now it's by itself. The Y used to be by itself, now it's with the B. Okay. Base stays the base, and the other two flip-flop. So they're going to ask you to write some equations and one form or the other, depending on what they've given you. Okay. Log base 4 of 16 equals 2. That's the equation they've given you, and they want us to write this into exponential. The base will stay the base, so it'll be 4, and then the 2 and the 16 trade jobs, so 4 squared equals 16. And we have no doubt that that's a true statement. 4 to the second is indeed 16. Okay. Let's try another one out. Log base 3 of 729 equals 6. 3 is the base. It will stay the base. The 6 and the 729 trade jobs. So 3 to the 6 equals 729. We can go the other way as well. We can turn these into log equations, taking them away from being exponents. The base was 4, so the base of your log will stay 4. The 3 is the power. It moves over by itself. The 64 comes over to join the 4. And then one more of this kind, we have 125 to the 1 -third equals 5. Your base, in this case, is 125. So it's the base of the log. Not a log you see often, but it's possible. And then the 5 and the 1 -third trade spots. The 1 -third moves over by itself. And the 5 comes over inside the log. Another thing they're going to ask us to do is evaluate some logs. Now, evaluating logs isn't as hard as a lot of people try to make it out to be. The trick is to turn it into an exponential equation. So they've given me log base 3 of 81. I'm going to put an equals x on the end of that. I'm going to put an equals x, and then I'm going to flip-flop it. I'm going to convert it to an exponential equation. So the 3 stays the base. The x and the 81 switch places. Now it's an equation like we did last time. And we know how to deal with these. So I'm going to take that 81 and turn it into a power of 3. 3 to the x would equal 3 to the 4th. 81 is 3 to the 4th power. Now the 3's cancel, and we have our value, which is 4. Let's tangle with a little bit trickier one. We have log base a half of 256. Well, again, I'm going to put an equals x on the end of it.
Now, I'm going to turn it into an exponential equation. So the base, 1 half, to the x power equals 256. Now, playing around with my 256, I found out that 256 is 2 to the 8th power. I just sat there with the calculator and went 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 until I got to 256 and counted how many 2's I had. 1 half, remember, is a negative power. So I have 2 to the negative x. Now those cancel. Gives me negative x equals 8, so x is negative 8. Okay. They're also going to ask us to do some graphing. And we have the basic idea we get some x's and figure out the y's to go with them. There are three basic points that we're interested in. Whatever base they gave us for our log, we want x equals that number, x equals the base, to be one of our choices for x. x equals 1 to be a choice for x. And x equals the reciprocal of our base to be a choice. So let's tangle with this one. We have log base 2 of x. Okay. b is 2 in this case, so our choices are x equals 2, because that's b, x equals 1, because we like x equals 1, and x equals a half, because b is 2, 1 over 2 is 1 half. Now, when we make these choices, we do it for a reason. Log base 2 of 2 is 1. Log base 2 of 1 is 0. And for 1 half, we'll get negative 1. Okay, we could go through and do the exponential equation bit to get to these answers. But the key is, if we made these choices for x, if we made the proper choices for x, we know the y's that we're going to get. So now we can plot these things. At x equals 2, we got 1. At x equals 1, we got 0. And at x equals a half, we got negative 1. And just like with the exponential graphs that we had last time, I shouldn't have it quite that flat. We're going to be... Ugh, heading downhill on one side and flattish on the other. Okay, That's what an, a logarithmic graph looks like. We will uh, also have to work with transformed logarithmic graphs. And the easiest way I've found to deal with these transformed graphs where did my page go? Thank you. Is to have a bigger table to work from. Okay. They have a summary thing on page 470 that might be useful to have for you. Over the years, I've found that some people can work with that kind of information in a table, and, and it helps them. Some people, it just confuses them more than it helps them. So if it helps you to use that information on 470, great. If not, then don't worry about it. But what I'm going to do is use this big, bigger expanded table to help me get <clears throat> the uh, information I need to graph. Now we talked last time, remember, x equals b, x equals 1, and x equals 1 over b. All right. Those need to go in the x minus 2 column because that's what we're taking the log of. Okay. b in this case is 3. 
the base is 3, so we'll have 3, 1, 1 third for our magic numbers. If we take the logs of those, we get our trusty 1, 0, negative 1. Okay. Now we need to work backwards to figure out what x is. If x minus 2 is 3, what minus 2 gave us 3? 5. What minus 2 gives us 1? 3. What minus 2 gives us a third? 2 and a third. So these are going to be the ultimately the x's. These are the x's we're going to work with to graph. When we subtract 2, we get our magic numbers that we chose. When we take the log, we get the corresponding numbers from the logs. Now, what does the function say to do next? Multiply times 2. 1 times 2 is 2. And then 2 minus 1 is 1. So ultimately, we're plotting the point 5, 1. Well, we know how to do that. 5, 1. From here, 0 times 2 is 0. And then that answer, minus 1, is negative 1. So at 0, I got negative 1. Or, excuse me, at 3. At 3, I got negative 1. Because 3 was the ultimately the x that we worked with. And the last one here, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Minus 1 is negative 3. So our point, 2 and a third, negative 3. 2 and a third, negative 3. And again, a nice, perfectly smooth graph that goes right through the point that we're aiming at. Your mileage may vary. Okay. But remember, the idea is let's take what the function is doing and make a table to show us that so that we can get there piece by piece. We start with what's inside the log. Then we work backwards to get the x that gives it, gets us to that point. We take the log of our value times whatever happens to be multiplied on the outside, and then plus or minus whatever happens to be added at the end. In this case, it was subtract 1, so we did minus 1. Okay. If you had questions along the way, as always, I hope you wrote those down, bring them in to ask, and we will see you in class.